Hey, on here, part two, video two of the recommendations from the one and only SJ. Now we got another, another scientifically accurate Jurassic World video, but this time it's a different dinosaur. The the Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus. I think I actually said that correct this time. I butchered the last dinosaur. But this one is pretty accurate, Ther Theranosaurus. I feel like that's pretty damn spot on. So we finna learn the reality of this dinosaur. Okay, how did it really look? You know, Jurassic World had the little Hollywood spice to it. So now we finna learn how much spice did they add to it. So with that being said, if you're new, like, comment, subscribe. If you're not new, just keep coming back. Subscribe, but what are you doing? Let's go. This um. video was made possible by Brilliant. Mongolia. Today, this region known as the Nemet Formation is covered by the Gobi Desert. Hmm. During the late Cretaceous, however, it was a sprawling oasis with expansive wetlands and lush temperate forests. This prehistoric paradise was home to a rich diversity of life, including some of the most peculiar dinosaurs the world has ever seen. One of the best known of these bizarre beasts is none other than the scythe clawed giant Therizinosaurus. Ther Damn it! I was close! Ther Therizinosaurus? <laughs> Therizinosaurus. This <laughs> has been a popular species among dinosaur enthusiasts and has recently become even more famous thanks to its inclusion in Jurassic World Dominion. And while Jurassic World finally brought Therizinosaurus into the limelight, what was shown in the movies is quite different from what the animal was like in reality. Yeah, we know that so Hollywood. In this video, we will be taking spice. a look at what Therizinosaurus was actually a like and compare it to the Jurassic World's rendition. We will start by taking a look at what we know about Therizinosaurus according yeah. to science, and then we will take a look at the Jurassic World version to see yeah, how it's be spiders biting me every time I sleep. It's always a bump on me. See, but like, I feel like sometimes it might be in some cases where like the real life dinosaur looks better than like, but like, man, this just look like it's for Hollywood, bro. Like, this don't look Hollywood ready. This look Hollywood ready. Fossils of Therizinosaurus were first discovered in 1948. Several Mongolian paleontological expeditions Damn. led by the USSR Academy of Sciences were conducted in the Nomet Formation of the Gobi Desert. The expeditions unearthed numerous dinosaur and turtle fossil remains, but the most notable fossils found were three large claw bones. These fossils were described in 1954 and were named the new genus and type species Therizinosaurus chiloniformis. Therizinosaurus means scythe lizard, while Chiloniformis means turtle. The fossils were originally thought to have belonged to a giant marine turtle who used these hand claws to harvest seaweed. Then, in 1970, Russian paleontologist Anatoly K. Rozhdyasvensky suggested that these bones actually belonged to a theropod dinosaur and not a giant turtle. He argued that the bones more so resembled the fingers of other theropod dinosaurs than they did of turtles. This was further supported by a Polish paleontologist, Holska Osmoska, who at the time was publishing the first remains of Dinochirus. Further expeditions uncovered more bones of Therizinosaurus, including more complete arm bones, ribs, and parts of a foot. The discovery of related animals like Segnosaurus helped scientists gain a better understanding of these animals' morphology. At first, they were thought to have been sauropodomorphs like the Cerosaurus over here. Then, the discovery of an earlier species, Alxosaurus, made scientists realize that Therizinosaurus and Segnosaurus were both descended from a theropod common ancestor and were therefore not sauropodomorphs. Now scientists acknowledge that these animals belonged to the bird-like Manoraptoran clad within Solorosaurian theropods. This clad includes dinosaurs like raptors and modern-day birds. The first Therizinosaurs emerged during the early Cretaceous with species like Falcarius. 
Falcarius is the most basal therizinosaur known and has been considered a transitional form connecting the typical theropod body plan to the unusual morphology of Therizinosauridae. Like other theropods, Therizinosaurs started off with a more horizontal body plan, but over time as these animals got larger and larger, they began to adopt a more vertical stance, leading to the towering giants like Therizinosaurus. Therizinosaurus was a very large dinosaur, and it was the largest of the Therizinosaurs. It is estimated to have reached up to 10 meters or 33 feet in length, and stood 4.5 meters or 15 feet tall. It's believed to have weighed upwards of 3 to 5 tons or 3,000 to 5,000 kilograms. To better put this in perspective, this makes Therizinosaurus about as heavy as an elephant and as tall as a giraffe. Therizinosaurus was an herbivore what the would have needed to eat a lot of foliage to sustain its large size. The animal would have had a large pot belly held between its wide and deep hips. The shorter tails of large hey, hell way, hell if I was to see that in real life. A more vertical stance for better balance. Another distinguishing feature of Therizinosaurus are their feet. Unlike other theropods, the first digit of their feet made contact with the ground. Footprints attributed to a large Therizinosaur showed that the giant Therizinosaurs would have walked with all digits on the ground. In most theropods, this digit is usually vestigial. In Therizinosaurus, it may have helped with better distributing its weight. Of course, the most unique and recognizable feature of Therizinosaurus were their massive arms. Their arms with the claws could reach a length of 2.4 meters or 7.9 feet. The so I got longer arms than me. I have some short ass arms. Like, hold on. Yeah, my shit is nowhere near my knees, bro. Like, if I was to stand up straight, yeah, my arms is damn near. Yeah, I, I don't have long arms, bro. I, I, I don't. The longest claw could reach a meter. My shit is length, a T Rex. Making them the longest claws of any animal. The attachments. Yeah, I was looking at them claws. Claw. That is crazy. Developed indicating powerful muscles in life. The arms of Therizinosaurus were overall strong and capable of handling powerful stress. The function of these mighty arms are currently believed to have been used for foraging, defense, and even display. Therizinosaurus may have used their strong arms and claws to help pull vegetation down towards them. While the claws could be used to slash at attackers, they are believed yeah, to be would have been weapons and not the best for stabbing. They may have also used their claws as display structures to attract mates. Therizinosaurus's bizarre body plan actually shares some similarities with two groups of extinct mammals, Calicotheres like Calicotherium and giant ground sloths like Megatherium. While these mammals weren't bipedal, their powerful arms and hook-like claws... See, look, I don't know, I'd be... I seen these two things in Ark. This is how I know all some dinosaurs. <laughs> and there's a dinosaurs because the game Ark. And like, bro, I don't know. I just look at that damn big ass sloth. This is an example of convergent evolution. I don't like it. Where organisms not closely related end up evolving similar features for similar purposes. While there is no direct evidence of skin impressions for Therizinosaurus, it is currently believed that these animals had feathers. Well-preserved fossils of the related Bapiawasaurus show direct evidence of feathers covering its body. Because this animal is a relatively early species of Therizinosaur, it's believed that other members of the family would have had feathers as well. With the larger species like Therizinosaurus, perhaps they may have also had a more sparse covering of feathers instead of full floofy coats, due to their larger size. Of course, only more discoveries will help us better understand this animal's life appearance. While we don't have fossils of Therizinosaurus babies, the related Bapiawasaurus could give scientists an idea of what they were like. Further studies revealed that the Bapiawasaurus specimen was actually an immature individual who still had a lot of growing to do. This realization helped scientists better understand what younger Therizinosaurs would have been like. Like Tyrannosaurus and some other Solorosaurus, it might have been that young Therizinosaurus also had proportionally large arms and legs, making them more nimble. This may have also helped baby Therizinosauruses climb trees. And as they grew, they shifted their niche to become more ground-dwelling herbivores.
fossils of Therizinosaurus were discovered in the well-renowned Nemet Formation. The Nemet Formation represents an inland delta with an abundance of shallow lakes, large rivers, and mudflats in an otherwise arid region. Thanks to this unique landscape, this area was able to support a very rich diversity of plants and animals. Surprisingly, a lot of large dinosaurs made this region their home. Sauropods like Opistocelocaudia would have used their long necks to reach the leaves at the top of trees. Opistocelocaudia was a titanosaur and reached lengths of up to 13 meters and had proportionally shorter legs relative to its body. It was considered small by sauropod standards but was still quite a large animal. They are also believed to have been able to rear up on their hind limbs, giving them more access to even higher leaves. Dinochirus was another Yeah, that doofenshmirtz hunt back. God and damn. Was the largest ornithomimosaur dinosaur to ever live. Like Therizinosaurus, it had large claws on its hands and was a very bulky beast. While Therizinosaurus was a high browser, Dinochirus like a camel with one hump. Have mainly fed on aquatic plants and even fish. Differences in diets would have helped kept these animals from competing with each other. These lands were also home to the region's largest predator. Carbosaurus. This Asian cousin of T-Rex was smaller than its more famous relative, but was still one of the largest tyrannosaurids to ever live. And a 2020 study involving carbon and oxygen isotopes showed that Tarbosaurus preferred eating sauropods and hadrosaurs. Its taste for larger dinosaurs meant that other species like Therizinosaurus may not have been off the menu. Perhaps Therizinosaurus may have used its large size and scary claws to intimidate hungry predators like Tarbosaurus. And if that wasn't enough, then maybe fighting in self-defense would have been its best next option. Therizinosaurus was truly a bizarre and iconic animal, and would have stood out amongst the other dinosaurs that lived in the Jurassic World Dominion. This animal will only get more and more popular. <laughs> so now that we've gone over what no, we done got all the info. Now, let's compare it. To let's the see the accuracy. Version. The first major inaccuracy here is that the feet of the Jurassic World Dominion Therizinosaurus are incorrect. Here we see that the first digit is off the ground and more vestigial as seen in other theropods. In reality, the first digit of Therizinosaurus was on the ground to help better support the animal's weight. Mm -hmm. Moving on, let's take a look at the head. The head of the Dominion Therizinosaurus is depicted as very large, wide, and boxy. While a skull for Therizinosaurus has yet to be discovered, material from closely related species show that these animals tended to have smaller heads relative to the rest of their bodies. The Dominion Therizinosaurus is crazy how they don't you really need the head to kind of give an estimate to help how the head looked. And the lower jaw is downturned in shape, which is what fossils of other Therizinosaurus species show. Along with the beak, another feature the Dominion Therizinosaurus got right is its correct. Wrist. The wrist of the Dominion Therizinosaurus are not pronated and are in the correct position. The claws of the Dominion Therizinosaurus appear to be the correct shape and length. However, towards the end of the film, the T-Rex shoves the Giganotosaurus into the Therizinosaurus's claws. It's highly unlikely that the animal would have been able to- I ain't gonna lie. I haven't seen world domination yet. I'm getting spoiled. Like, so I already know how like the damn main antagonist is gonna fucking die. It's kind of fucked up. Like, <laughs> damn, SJ, you didn't spoil the movie <laughs> through the flesh at such a high force. Instead, the claws would most likely break on impact, proving very painful for the dinosaur. So now that we've gone over the animal's appearance, let's take a look. I at know, I know, I just, I didn't realize that. I didn't even think about it when I was watching the other one. Territorial and I'm like, it's dinosaur, and even I don't know, I know two of the dinosaurs I'm gonna see now. It is not improbable that a real life there is in the source. I know how one of them get basically murdered. In fact, if we look at modern day land animals, the most dangerous and aggressive tend to be large herbivores, so a temperamental Therizinosaurus as shown in the films is a great and interesting way to show that herbivorous dinosaurs may have okay, also been dangerous Okay, again, some things correct. 
Now the Therizinosaurus is shown eating ferns and ground foliage. This is actually contrary to what we know about large Therizinosaurids, since these animals were high browsers. Therizinosaurus may have also used their hands to help pull down branches, so it would have been nice seeing this kind of feeding behavior instead. One of the most notable traits of the Dominion Therizinosaurus is that it's blind, and it was further confirmed that the animal was actually using echolocation. There is no evidence that Therizinosaurus or any non-avian dinosaurs used echolocation. However, there are two groups of modern-day avian dinosaurs that do, the oil bird and several species of swiftlets. These birds roost in caves and even switch their echolocation off if there is enough light present. Their ecology and behaviors don't align with that of a large herbivorous theropod like Therizinosaurus, so it's highly unlikely that the real Therizinosaurus had or used echolocation. And finally, the most praiseworthy feature of the Dominion the most praiseworthy. is that it's feathered. While we don't know exactly what the skin's covering of Therizinosaurus would have looked like, well-preserved fossils of related species show evidence of this group of dinosaurs having feathers. The Dominion Therizinosaurus feathers are long and bristle-like, which is within the realm of possibility for these animals. And while this dinosaur is far from perfect, it's always great it to felt see like Jurassic World was like, you know what? As big as this Jurassic real thing World. looked cool enough. We're going to add our spice to it still. But for the most part, this thing already looked badass enough. So we don't need so to change much. we've gone over the differences, let's speculate what went into the DNA of this creature to make it look the way it did. Now, based on Jurassic World lore, all of the clones are created by extracting fragmentary DNA from amber and fossils, and then using DNA from different modern day animals to fill in the gaps. So for starters, fragmentary Therizinosaurus DNA was used initially. While this is a Biosyn clone, it's not too far-fetched to assume that they may have also used frog DNA, like InGen did with their dinosaurs. Biosyn may have also used the DNA of birds and crocodiles, since these are the closest living relatives of dinosaurs. DNA from oil birds and swiftlets could explain where the echolocation ability of Dominion's Therizinosaurus came from. And okay. finally, it's possible that sea turtle DNA may have been used to give the animal its more box-shaped head. So there we have it, our speculative genetic makeup of the Jurassic World Therizinosaurus. Again, none of this is officially canon to the franchise. Rather, this was done so as a fun way to further differentiate between the fantasy of Jurassic World and the reality of the fossil record. Jurassic World is the most popular IP in modern media, featuring dinosaurs and bringing feathered dinosaurs to the big screen for millions of people to enjoy is a long overdue but great first step. Of course, the animals depicted in the movie are far from perfect, but that's where these videos come in. Mm -hmm. I hope that we can all keep having fun, enjoying these movies, and learning new things about our favorite dinosaurs. And speaking about learning new things, I'd like to give a special thank you to this video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a problem solver. Ain't gonna lie, SJ. We got beef. You just spoiled the movie for me. Nah, but, uh, well, I feel like Jurassic World got that one not that far off. Yeah, it was some things that they had obviously did have correct, but for the most part, it was like they did some things right. So I don't know, maybe they thought, oh, this, maybe they did some more research on this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they determined to do something certain ways, do dinosaurs another. I don't know. But that being said, see you on the next one. Peace.